Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vera. Once again, we're on location with Gregor Gregerson, the founder of the Safe House and Silver Bullion, and we're in his vault, the Safe House, and this is the fourth part in a four-part series entitled, How Do You Know Your Gold Is Real? Gregor, again, thank you for coming on the show, and um, we do know that you have integrated a, a lab within the vault in order for us to test bullion, but essentially, how do you know it's real? Well, that was one of the questions that you know customers used to ask us, and it was back in 2011 when you know we wanted to get a better answer to that my ourselves because the traditional wisdom was you do a density test, uh, you basically weigh it and you look at the dimensions and if it's about right then you know it's got to be real or some people you know famously will bite it uh, <laughs> some people will say i've handled gold so long i would know what it is um, but you know the wisdom back then was you really want to know you have to melt the thing down so that was what uh, the industry was saying back then and yeah. in 2011 for me it all changed uh, because that's when we first saw x-ray spectrometers Okay. Um, which essentially are these machines, they're not cheap, they're about $35,000 each. Uh, you need to get um, a radiation uh, license, so to speak, because they, they shoot x-rays basically. Right. But they will shoot x-ray on a surface of a metal, it bounces back, and a spectrometer will analyze the returning signature and will tell you so much gold, so and so much copper, so and so much silver and so on. And uh, that was sort of what gave us a start to say, hey, um, we don't need to melt down the bullion. We can reliably say what it is by using a number of machines. Now, the X-ray mm -hmm. spectrometer itself is not enough. You need to have um, uh, other tests to look inside the bar. But that was what started it. And the reason why, of course, we wanted to have it is because uh, customers would ask how you know it's real. and what the industry would normally say is, well, we know where it's coming from and so on and so on. And that answer is partially true. But the other part is that uh, if you're a bullion dealer, you know, you're also buying back bullion mm -hmm. from the public or from a customer. If a customer buys something from you and leaves the store, he wants to be able to sell it back to you. Right. But how do you know that this bar is still the real bar, right? So saying, I know your sources, Maybe that covers 90, 95% of the cases, but what about that 5% where it's not fully traced? And you know, you, you do need to have a good way of being able to tell. And uh, that's how we ended up seeing the need and then developing the systems to be able to have, uh, be able to tell you with absolute certainty it is real. Okay, your testing process, you call it the DUX uh, system, D U X. Is it an easy system, and what? What are the processes for the ducts testing? Um, it's easy if you know how to use it. So okay. <laughs> you, uh, ducts uh, stands for density, ultrasound, and x-ray. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, you put these three tests together, or a slight variation of these three tests, and you can tell for certain if the bar is real. Um, x-ray, as I just mentioned, will tell you a very precise surface composition. But it only penetrates 5 to 10 microns into the metal, which right. means that uh, if it's a thin gold plating, it can tell you it's gold plating. Uh, if it's a thick gold plating, or you have, say, a millimeter of real gold, yeah. the machine will tell you it's real gold, right. uh, because it cannot look beyond that millimeter. And uh, that's the issue with, with uh, X-ray. You need to do additional tests in order to catch the, the advanced fakes. And for that, we have ultrasound. So ultrasound is great because it's the same type of device you use for um, if you're expecting mom and the doctor looks you know, at the ultrasound of the yeah. kid and you can see your kid and the heartbeat and all of these things. Uh, it's the same type of principle. Uh, you essentially send sound waves through the bar. Uh, the sound waves will take a certain amount of time to go through the metal, depending on the type of metal. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, gold, for example, is around 3,200 uh, meters per second. Uh, tungsten, which is often used to 
uh, make fake gold bars of right. similar density uh, would have about 5,800 meters per second. So you've got a big difference, which means that you can very quickly tell that something's wrong if you have a tungsten inside the bar. Um, so the combination of doing an X-ray, which tells your surface composition and um, uh, basically how pure something is in a very structured and, and um, precise manner, and then having the ultrasound to make sure that same surface goes all the way down through the bar and back, and there are no different metals in there. That combination it gives you a pretty good certainty. And then on top of that, we'll be having a density test, mm -hmm. which basically just means we're weighing the bar and making sure the size is the same as, as a bar. Um, such that when you put these three tests together, it becomes almost impossible to fake it because okay. you can, uh, a density optimized bar will be made out of tungsten. And these are the typical bars, but that will be easily detected with the ultrasound. And hence, the three tests basically give you certainty of uh, what you're looking at, what you're testing. Okay, so during your test, any drilling, any scratching, any acid test? Any uh, no, we don't need to do trills. Uh, we don't need to do acid because, uh, again, we're just sending sound waves through it. So okay. it's non-destructive testing. Uh, your bullion does not get hurt or damaged in any way. Okay. How about, um, let's say, like uh, some of these 100 gram uh, gold bars, they come in blister packs. Yeah. Are these tests able to get a proper reading on the gold even through the, the blister packs? Yes and no. Uh, yeah. Ultrasound definitely cannot because ultrasound needs to have a, it cannot have any air gaps in between. So if you have okay. plastic or any air gap, you won't be able to take a reading. Um, but it is possible to replace ultrasound with electric conductivity uh, testing. Uh, these are devices which came later. These, um, I think I first saw them in 2016 or so. Ultrasound has been around for a long time. X-ray came around 2011 these electric conductivity readers. We had one of the first models made by Fisher back in the day, around 2015, 2016. Uh, we were one of the experimental sort of users of it. Uh, nowadays, they've come down in price and they're actually one of the best ways to test bullion. But essentially, uh, what you do is you lose some electromagnetic and electrical uh, conduits to see how easily electricity which is projected through this crate, flows from two points. And uh, silver is the most conductive metal in the world. Okay. So you cannot fake, uh, you cannot have higher conductivity than silver, so it's perfect for silver. Gold is also one of the most conductive. Uh, use tungsten or something in it, it will have a lot less conductivity. If soon as you mix gold with some other alloy, conductivity also go way down. So. It's a type of test where as soon as you have some impurities, uh, the result changes drastically, which means it's very good to test 999 gold or right. as a silver and so on. Um, make a long story short, if you do have a blister pack, you can basically still use X-ray to some degree. You get a little bit of a distorted reading because X-rays have to go through the plastic, mm -hmm. uh, but you still get a rough uh, picture of it. And most importantly, uh, electrical conductivity, uh, ECM, uh, electrical conductivity measurement, technically that's what it's called, uh, will give you a good result and you can go through thin layers of plastic. Okay. And uh, <coughs> through the years of testing, have you ever encountered um, some fake bullion? Uh, mm -hmm. And do you foresee, let's say, if gold and silver should rise somewhat in the future, do you see possibility of a fake bullion coming into the market? Now, we've been, I guess, lucky that we never had any serious uh, events. Um, now, we, we did have a case where a gold bar came in, uh, transferred in by a customer, which we couldn't test. Um, mm. Ultrasound were giving very f funny reading. And it, what we ended up doing is we contacted the customer. We said, we cannot test this. Uh, we now say uh, cement. Can we contact cement, send it back to cement, uh, if they agree, and see if we can get your replacement? Customer said yes. We contacted cement. Cement was uh, one of those, our suppliers, essentially, said yeah. 
uh, send us the, the gold bar. We'll have a look at it. So we send it back to the Mint. Uh, they analyze it, they cut it in half. And it turned out that the bar had a little air bubbles inside. Air bubbles. Yes. So it can happen during the production process that you, you, hadn't, you don't have pure gold, but you have very tiny air bubbles. And what happened is the ultrasound would hit the air bubbles and reflect back. Right. That's why we yeah. couldn't test it. Now, technically, it was still a genuine bar um, because when these bars are made by the mint, they're always made a bit bigger. And since they're being put into acid bars and they're slowly leached the gold out in order to make it exactly one kg because um, a mint does not want to give you 1,000.02 grams, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. margins are very small in the industry, so they want to get just at 1,000 1, grams, just at 1 kg. And to do that, you go through this leaching process. So in this case, what essentially happens, the little air bubbles were in there, and it caused the bar to be slightly bigger, but it still had 1 kg of pure gold. Um, but anyway, uh, the, uh, the mint gave us a new bar and we replaced, we tested it, it was fine, and we replaced it for the customer. Uh, we had another shipment which came in, it was actually two tons of silver. And this shipment uh, was extremely rough. Uh, this was the ugliest bars, silver bars I've seen so far. They were made in 1985 by a Polish refinery. Oh boy. Which basically means this was Soviet era uh, silver. Yeah. Right, right. Um, but the refinery since then had become an LBMA refinery and y you know, once you're LBMA, your older bars are also acceptable. So um, the issue with the bars was when we extrayed them, we didn't get 999, we get uh, 98.7 or something. And there were so many holes and other issues that it was very hard to use ultrasound. Uh, we had to put it in a, underwater in a tub in order to have the uh, holes be filled and then use a special type of probe with a different frequency okay. um, to make up for the very rough grain of these bars. Uh, but even then we didn't feel very confident. So what we actually ended up doing is uh, contact the supplier, the bullion dealer who shipped it there on behalf of the customer. And we kind of said, look, we, we don't feel comfortable with this. Um, how about we send it to, for melting to a refinery? And we had it re-refined and um, because we gave them the results, they said, okay, let's, let's do it that way. Because of course the other party also wanted to make sure, you know, because we caught it, because we, were, um, we didn't accept the shipments the way it was. Um, but it turned out the silver was fine. Mm. Uh, it was 999. And uh, we decided to just eat the cost. Uh, we didn't feel it was right that we we're going to penalize party who shipped it to us and we just paid for it um, and the customer got new bars um, nice and shiny stored for him um, but again that's because it's very important for me so that whatever we store under our storage system right. uh, be genuine and that we know it's the real thing um, because that's the only way we can really confidently create liquidity for it and do all the other things we do Okay, I, I know oftentimes um, some bars, they come with certificates, other bars, they, they don't come with certificates. Uh, what's your view on the certificate? I mean, how does it truly validate what the bar is or does the bar validate what the bar is? Um, personally, I think certificates are a waste of time and they're a security risk. They don't add to security. Why so? Um, because people think that having a piece of paper which says it's real somehow makes the bar real. And they don't look critically at the bar because mm. they think there's a piece of paper. The reality is it's a lot easier to fake a piece of paper yeah. than it is to fake the bar. Um, a case in point is we did have one elderly lady. She bought uh, what she thought are platinum bars in the early 80s. It was here in Singapore. And 25 years later, she brought them into us and they wanted to sell it. And we looked at it and they were basically iron bars. And they had a Johnson Matthew logo on it. And the Johnson Matthew logo was misspelled. Oh boy. 
and it had a certificate with it. And she said, but I have a certificate yeah. of a misspelled Johnson Matthew bar saying 999 platinum. You know, and, uh, I mean, we felt very sorry for her, but that's sort of the reality. You, you, just because a piece of paper says certificate and says 999, you know, it, it doesn't in any real way make that bar uh, real because the bar itself is a certificate. The bar will have the purity on it, it will have the weight on it, it will normally have a serial number on it, and it will have the mint mark, and the mint who created it. That's all you need. And it's a physical part of the bar, you cannot change it. You can easily take one certificate, make a photocopy of it, change it somehow, make a similar looking one, uh, but you cannot do so with a bar. So what's the purpose of uh, a certificate? In many ways, it's just a marketing tool and a self-fulfilling right. prophecy. It's a customer heard, oh, I want to have a certificate with a bar, therefore I want to have a certificate. And somehow they think that the bar is not as valuable if you don't have a certificate. Um, but again, none of these things are true. And normally if you get you know, LBMA type big bars, we're talking it's a half million dollar bars, you know, 400 ounce gold um, or 1,000 ounce uh, you know, silver bars, you know, so big ones, they don't come with certificates. The ones which come with certificates are the retail ones. There's the 10 ounce bars. Uh, the one ounce bar, you know, which is being sold to the customers, they will come with certificate um, because the customers ask for it, because they think they need it. Uh, right. But it does not really add real value, and I think if anything, it's a distraction. I think the industry would be safer if people were to see it as what the real security value of these documents are. Ultimately, what you're buying is a, a unit of mass of a certain metal. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure that you can verify that indeed it is that metal and that it's genuine. And fortunately, it's quite easy to do uh, because these metals typically are 999. So with the testing mechanisms we have, we can uh, easily verify that. And see, again, certificates don't add much to that. Gregor, silver bullion, guarantees the authenticity of the bullion that it sells through customers and uh, even as well as what it takes in from clients uh, through transfer ins and then goes into storage. Um, this isn't a common practice that bullion dealers or, or even vaults might do for that matter. So why does silver bullion do it and what is the guarantee that silver bullion offers? Well. I think you have to understand the dynamics in the industry to, to kind of see why we are doing this and other entities are not. In our case, we are vertically integrated, meaning we have a bullion dealer which can basically buy and sell gold and silver, create liquidity, and we have a storage facility which stores it. They're all one entity um, located two kilometers from each other, very close. Okay. So we can coordinate and make our own rules. We can do the testing and all these things quite easily. But if you look at the industry, that's not how it works. It says the bullion dealers, which are one level, and then you have the vaults, which essentially are just specializing in vault storage. And there are two different entities, so normally outsourced. Now, a vault is working on a very tight margins for storage. And uh, they don't have the expertise or they don't want to take the liability or the risk yeah. of testing all the bullion that comes in. I mean, think about the amount of trainings that you have to do for people, the amount of equipment you have to buy. And then if something is borderline, like the case I mentioned, yeah. where we had some silver, which is 98.7, the world doesn't want to be, be put in that situation. We then have to send it somewhere else. I mean, that's, that's very complicated, and you cannot do it with this normal storage fees uh, you know, that they get. You would have to increase prices, nobody wants that. Uh, you know, it's just not something that a vault will do, which is why the vaults would always store on a set to contain basis. Meaning, you're telling me it's gold, I assume it's gold, I give you back whatever you gave me, mm -hmm. And if I need to insure it, I insure it based on it being gold. Whether it is gold or not, that's not for me to tell. I'm taking your word for it. That's what set to contain means. 
uh, what we're doing here is we're doing on a known good basis, meaning it's a safe house as a vault actually tests everything coming in mm -hmm. unless it's coming directly from the refiner or the mint. In which case we feel we don't need to. We might take a few sample tests. Um, <coughs> but otherwise if it's coming from a customer or another world, we will test uh, all of that bullion uh, to make sure that it's indeed genuine. And we have protocols in place on uh, how we handle it if it isn't fine. I mean, we, uh, if we cannot verify that it's genuine, it goes into a tamper evident bag and it's basically being sent back along with the video of us opening the parcel, testing it and sending it back. Sent back to uh, uh, to wherever it understand. came from, so whichever vault it came from or customer or whatever the source of it was. And um, we, we feel that it's important to do it because we feel that we should have a good answer when a customer asks, how do I know it's real? Right. When you have a standard setup where you have a bullion dealer who probably never s actually sees the bullion. They just act as a middleman to basically tell a refinery, ship the bullion to this vault, and then it's being stored there, if it is stored. And they never really see it. Now, the question is, what happens if some of that gold later on turns out to be fake? Right. The vault is going to say, that's not my business. I'm set to contain. The bullion dealer is probably going to say, well, I bought it from party so-and-so. Party so-and-so said it's real. Right. Party so and so said, "Well, I thought it was real over here." Then it becomes a blame game, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, probably whoever owns that gold is the one who's going to take the hit. Now, with most systems, because it's not an ownership system, it's a liability system. The one's owning it is probably the, the dealer himself, but he's owing it to the customers. Right. So, if the dealer has a capitalization of, I don't know, eight million dollars and it turns out that he just got $20 million of fake bullion, then what's going to happen? Uh, suddenly, you know, he might get into big trouble and his customers might lose, uh, you know, all of that bullion. So it, 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 it all works well until something works, goes wrong. Right. And, and that's something, uh, you know, again, coming back to this motto we have, the safest place for your gold and silver, right? That's something that you have to prevent and have a very strong answer to. And I feel that saying, well, um, I know where it's coming from, it's not good enough. Because the reality is you don't always know where it's coming from. You don't always get all your bullion from the refinery, you're getting it from customers selling it back to you. And when somebody sells it back to you, you don't really know where it's coming from. When you're getting it from another vault, transferred in, you don't really know where it's coming from. So um, it's not good enough for an answer for us. And that's why we went through the expense and the systems to build up the testing and so on. And the genuinity guarantee mm -hmm. is basically there to put in writing so that we put our name and our asset on there because with our system, you are the owner. So if that bullion turns up to be problematic, uh, basically we have to come in uh, and make up for it and put the money where, where our mouse is. Um, but we can easily do it because we always test it before it goes in there. Right. You see, I do not want to give that type of guarantee if I cannot test it. Right. Because for all I know, some customer trans transfers in uh, 50 kilograms worth of gold, which turns out to be fake. Yeah. Right. Because I will test it, I can refuse to accept it during my testing process and send it back along with a video of us testing it to ensure that the customer has transparency on what we did and didn't do. And so that's the testing is a prerequisite for the uh, genuinity guarantee. Okay, so let's say uh, a customer is absolutely convinced he has the real thing. Sends it to you, you can verify through testing that it's, it's not real, but the customer insists that it is real and, and some funny games were played with the bar where it was substituted. What happens then? Well, and, and see, that was one of the biggest risks we had to mitigate in order to allow for the transfer in program uh, for people to transfer their gold to us. Because as you mentioned, a customer can uh, send us fake bullion and say, mm -hmm. we exchange the real gold for fake gold and trying to take right. his bullion. Uh, so 
essentially it's all a matter of handling operations. Uh, when the parcel arrives, uh, it, it arrives at the vault. We have this vault management system where you go through different steps. A deposit is split into seven subtasks. And one of the tasks is going to be the opening of the parcel. Now, the opening of the parcel, it, it, that's happening in an area which basically is covered by high definition uh, CCTV screens. It all gets recorded. It's streamed both locally and streamed to our offsite location as well in real time. And essentially, we open it up. We go through the testing process right there and then under these cameras. And if the system has a problem, if the bar has a problem, uh, we will basically put it in tamper evident bags. Right. Uh, on the video, you will see the number of the bag where it's put in. And tamper evident means that once you close it, there's no way of reopening it without having an obvious mark that it was opened again. I see. And what we then do is we wouldn't necessarily say that the bar is a fake. We would say we cannot verify that this bar is indeed real. So we cannot accept it in our system. And we will be shipping that bar inside that temp evident bag back to the customer along with a USB stick uh, showing us opening the container in which we derived, testing it and putting it in the other bar. And uh, especially if this bar has a serial number and so on, that's very clear, so it was this bar. Yeah. And that basically provides a lot of transparency to everybody involved. Um, and that's how we protect ourselves from the possibility of a customer, say, sending in some uh, Chinese-made fake bars, because in China, they actually have factories for using these things. Um, yeah. Yes, they do. And uh, uh, for novelty reasons, but it doesn't say novelty on the bar. Uh, and uh, then claiming that's the real thing. Right. So, so that was uh, something that's um, a big concern when you have a system like this. But we, we cover that very well. We've been running the system for six years now. Uh, and we are very confident about our processes. Okay, I uh, mm. just want to um, touch on one point. You mentioned liquidity and you also mentioned testing. Um, these two seem to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, could you share with us the reason why these two have to be in place in order to, to work together for what Silver Bullion does? Well, the whole financial system works based on trust. Now, the so idea is if you have gold, you have something in your hand and you don't just have to run on trust because you have physical gold. But if you don't have, if you're not sure whether that gold you have in your hand is real, mm. then you don't have trust and the whole thing is pointless. So that's why it's so critical that if you have a physical gold bar, that indeed that gold has to be real and you have to have a good answer or a good explanation how you know that it's real. And when you can give that explanation, that's when you can establish the trust, which will then make it easy for us to buy the gold back to you. Mm -hmm. And for our suppliers, because we build up the reputation, to quickly uh, buy that gold back from us even before they receive the gold. And that's one way where if you have a very large transaction, say we have a, a 10, uh, well, say a $10 million sellback or something, we can still quickly provide liquidity because uh, we have this uh, connection where we can return the bars and get the cash right away without even having to wait for the gold sometimes to get out of our vault because we established this trust with the suppliers. And the suppliers don't have to worry about whether the gold is real or, or fake right. because if there's even a chance that it's fake, uh, suddenly you don't have good liquidity because then supplier would say, okay, um, you take that gold and ship it over back to my vault over here. And then I might have to send it to a refinery to actually uh, right. uh, test it. So suddenly we wouldn't be sending you some money in two days. It might take three weeks. It might yeah. take four weeks. So you cannot have good liquidity if you have any kind of doubt on whether the gold is real or fake. And I do believe that there's going to be a time in the future at some point where we're going to find that some bullion uh, turns out not to be real. Uh, we had discoveries before 
uh, LBMA goals, which ended up not being the real thing. Um, and somebody basically has to bear that price. Uh, we just want to make sure that it's not going to be us, it's not going to be our customers. Uh, and that when even during those times, our systems are strong enough, not just that our customers trust us, but our suppliers and everybody else knows that whatever's coming through us is going to be the genuine thing. Right. And that's how we can provide liquidity. So it's a fundamentally important in order to ensure that you have liquidity so you can buy and sell quickly and so that you can get peer-to-peer -peer loans mm -hmm. um, uh, without the lender having to worry, well, what if the gold is fake? Because if he has to worry about the gold being fake, suddenly the loan probably isn't two and a half percent. Suddenly it might be six percent right. because right. there's more risk, right? And our aim is to remove risk as much as possible to the point where people basically do not have to worry about it. And by doing this, we generate the trust. Okay. So uh, there you have it. Uh, Gregor Gregerson, the founder of Silver Bullion and the Safe House, talks a bit about how you know your gold and silver is real. And this will conclude the four-part series on storage where how to know if you're an asset owner and not a creditor, uh, the jurisdiction of Singapore, the insurance that the Safe House offers, and again, how do you know if your gold and silver is real? So, Gregor, we, we thank you for your time and explaining this to all of us, and we hope to see you again soon. Take care, everyone. Take care. That was Gregor Gregerson, founder of Silver Bullion and the Safe House, letting you know how you can tell if your bullion is real and why Silver Bullion and the Safe House does what other vaults won't. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the SBTV channel to be updated on our new content.